Switzerland is a secular state whose constitution guarantees freedom of religious expression to all. It's home to about 400,000 Muslims. They live peacefully among the Swiss, speak their languages, attend their schools, work in their offices and factories, and pay their taxes. Although Islam is the second largest faith after Christianity, there are only four mosques with minarets across the country. None of them is used to raise the azan, the call to prayer. But when a Turkish cultural group in the northern suburb of Wangen by Olten asked to build this six-meter-high minaret on top of its mosque, there was an outcry. It took us four years to overcome the legal hurdles, but we were successful in the end. During the waiting period, there were a lot of very negative reports about us in the press, which weren't true. It was probably these that provoked a number of people to attack our association building. They threw stones, somebody threw a bottle, and a pig's head was hung up at the door. Of course, we don't hold it against the Swiss in general, because we think the Swiss are very patient and tolerant. That was just a few people who were provoked and didn't really know what they were doing. Meanwhile, members of another Islamic group in Langenthal, halfway between Bern and Basel, are waging a battle to build a minaret on their mosque. Here, too, there's considerable opposition. It's a symbol of Islamic power. I think we should let them practice their religion without a tower. We're afraid that if they build a minaret, they'll use it for the call to prayer. And I think if I were to go and build a church representing my religion in their country, they wouldn't be very happy about it. Opposition to these attempts to construct minarets led to a nationwide campaign to ban the building of any new towers. The campaigners, led by Ulrich Schlür from the right-wing People's Party, managed to collect more than 100,000 signatures, forcing a referendum on the issue. He believes he's helping to empower the Swiss. The population had to realize in different villages that they, can, they have nothing to say when minarets are, uh, are in discussion. And that is the reason that we have to find a solution in our constitution. Schluer says minarets encourage the spread of Islamic influence and could open the door to Sharia law based on the Koran. It's a sign that they want to establish a different legal system here from the one we live by at the moment. Sharia law does not allow for equal opportunities. Girls and boys would no longer be able to attend the same schools, etc. Mustafa Karahan from the Turkish Cultural Association in Wangen refutes the claims. A minaret certainly doesn't cause people to become more radical and has no influence on the integration of Muslims in Swiss society. I think by building a minaret, people learn to respect our faith as we respect other religions. The campaign posters are causing a storm of controversy as they seem to blur the distinction between ordinary Swiss Muslims and radical followers of Islam. The Federal Commission Against Racism says the posters incite hatred and some cities and towns have banned them. Could it be that Schluer and his team are waging a war not just against minarets but against Islam? These are the important problems we have to discuss. Is it uh, the future of Switzerland that uh, the, the women are no longer with open face in, in our streets that was uh, the, in the, during centuries that, that was always that we have open-minded people and we don't uh, want to change that. Mutalip Karademi, president of the Islamic community in Langenthal, says the campaigners are playing on people's fears about fundamentalism. They call us terrorists. They call us radicals. They call us the Taliban. So many different labels, all of them wrong. We are fully integrated in Switzerland. We love this country almost more than our own. 
Our children were born here. They're more Swiss than Albanian. It's not true what they say. The Swiss Council of Religions and the Swiss government oppose the initiative. They argue that it contradicts the core values of the Swiss constitution. The Minaret, the minaret initiative is unnecessary and counterproductive in the present climate. It is dangerous and even irresponsible. Will the Swiss ignore their government and vote yes to the ban? Recent surveys show that only a small majority oppose the initiative. If the campaign succeeds, this would be very bad for Switzerland. Its reputation would be damaged abroad, and particularly in Islamic states. If the Swiss vote to change the law, we could appeal to the European Court of Human Rights, and that would create a major headache for Switzerland. On November the 29th, the Swiss will decide whether to single out their largest religious minority for a constitutional ban on this architectural addition to their houses of worship. If they do, Switzerland, which has always prided itself on its humanitarian tradition and its constitution enshrining religious freedom, will be a different place on November the 30th.